All right, I'm going to um, <clears throat> go ahead and get started. Um, I want to welcome everyone to our virtual version of the March to Fort Congre, um, which is the story of history and culture discovering 18th century KC and the Midlands. Great. Yeah. I'm John Jamison, a heritage consultant with the city of Casey, and I will host and moderate this virtual session, which is a reflection or sneak preview of the in-person March to Fort Congre event conducted in the park along the Timmerman Trail, which we hope to be able to stage again inside the park this coming spring. So we hope that uh, if, if we have that, uh, stay tuned to our website, and I'll show that website at the end of this and hopefully we can get back out and do this on a trail. In this session, we'll be exploring the fascinating history of the 12,000 year history park, KC and the South Carolina Midlands. The 12,000 year history park is a little under 400 acre area at the Southern portion of the Timberland Trail within the city of KC in Lexington County. The park is rich in both natural and historic resources, including the remains of an 18th century fort and trading post, and the site of the 1865 Civil War battle that occurred just prior to the burning of Columbia. The main landscape feature of the battlefield is the over a mile long stretch of pristinely preserved defensive earthworks that were constructed along the north bank of the Congaree Creek. And we also have the historic Cherokee Path and later the Old State Road, which both run through the park. Our journey today is a virtual tour arranged chronologically roughly of a sampling of 18th century history and culture. Our first stop will be at Fort Congaree, an important 1718 to 1722 archeological site that helps state, set the stage for Euro-American trade and settlement in the Midlands. We then join the Powder Magazine in Charleston to learn about related contemporaneous events that affected the history of the area. We move forward in time to learn about Sex Gotha in the 1730 township scheme in South Carolina, and then punctuate our journey by an encounter with the naturalist explorer Mark Gatesby. We move on to look at the natural landscape with a look at the Longleaf Pine ecosystem and exhibit historic Camden. And we conclude with the intriguing story of the history of the Casey House spanning the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. So first up is archaeologist James Stewart to talk about Fort Congaree. Take it away, James. We can't hear you, James. All right, so I'm an archaeologist with New South Associates currently. Uh, in 2010, I did a master's study on the uh, Fort Congaree one occupation that was in um, that was occurring between uh, 1718 and 1722. Um, so I've got a presentation uh, with some visual aids that I am trying to get up on the screen now. Um, let's see. Uh, John, is it possible to um, share a screen here? Yeah, why don't I temporarily make you the host and um, um, you can do it and just, just give it back to me when you're done. Okay. Let's see. Well, here we go. All right, so um, so anyway, Fort Congaree one. Um, I started uh, working on this project in 2010. Uh, I've actually still got some um, uh, outstanding uh, reporting that I still need to uh, provide for this project. But uh, today I'm just going to kind of go over the um, occupational history of the site and a little bit of how the, um, the site was founded and uh, some of the results that we have from our archaeological study. So uh, 
see if we can get this to advance. All right, so uh, Fort Congaree is part of the South Carolina history uh, and the earliest colonial um, history of the colony uh, of South Carolina. So what I would like to show is what the colonists uh, originally thought the, the, the patent for South Carolina uh, was. So uh, in 1629, this red outlined area was uh, the boundaries for the colony of Carolina. Uh, and in 1665, the um, boundaries were expanded. And if you notice that they actually include uh, St. Augustine to the south, and that was the capital of uh, Spanish Florida and also uh, Mobile, which was part of uh, French Louisiana. So the northern uh, purple line that you see is actually the modern day um, boundary of North Carolina and Virginia. Now, what the effective size of the colony was uh, for most of the, uh, uh, say, first 50 years of Carolina's existence was uh, this area that's highlighted with the hatch lines. Uh, and that was what they commonly referred to as the settlement. And in the period that they um, uh, used Fort Congaree, this uh, basically marks the effective boundary of control for an area that's uh, uh, kind of encircling ch the Charlestown port. So if you'll notice on On this image, you'll see Fort Moore, Fort Congaree, and Winnie Factory. Those three forts were established uh, in the aftermath of the Embassy War, where the uh, groups that were participating in the Indian trade, uh, which uh, basically was the main line economy of the early um, of the early colony. Uh, were unsatisfied with the way that the trade was being conducted. Uh, there were some uh, debt relationships between the traders and the Native American groups that uh, kind of inspired uh, some uh, ill will. Uh, you know, we're talking about enforced uh, slavery, uh, manipulation through the distribution of alcohol, and um, uh, some generally uh, bad actors uh, on the part of the Indian trade. So uh, the, the Native Americans surrounding the colony, once again, this is Charlestown here, um, uh, rose up in a rebellion, uh, or uh, you know, some would say a, a kind of a putative strike against the uh, Indian traders. And essentially all of these groups were involved in some way with the uh, Yemisi War. Uh, the name uh, was applied uh, by the historians because uh, the Yemisis uh, were kind of the first instigators in the war, but uh, all of these groups uh, that are shown on this figure uh, had some role in um, attacking the, the settlement. And uh, at the end of the war, the reason that the war kind of uh, drew down to um, um, a somewhat peaceful um, conflict, it, it never really ended, um, was brought about by an alliance between the colony of South Carolina, or colony and uh, the Cherokee. So uh, the Cherokee got to set up some uh, uh, conditions for the alliance. And part of that uh, was the creation of a fort and trading factory at the Congarees. And the main uh, significance of that was that it allowed the Cherokees who were living up in the Appalachian Mountains and the Blue Ridge, uh, a separate route to Charlestown that avoided uh, all of these groups that they were at war with. So here's a figure that shows the lower towns um, and those those two routes. You've got Fort Moore here, and then you've got Fort Congaree here, and the Winnie factory is over off this way. But all of these um, 
towns were essentially serviced through uh, Fort Congaree. So when they established the town, uh, the uh, people that were involved with uh, kind of organizing the effort were a body of um, uh, officials that were created out of the um, colonial legislature. It was called the uh, Commissioners of the Indian Trade. We have journals from their uh, meetings and some of their instructions that they provided to Fort Moore and Fort uh, Congaree, but we don't have a, uh, a, a wonderful, um, wonderfully robust historical record for this period. A lot of these things, um, uh, you know, there's a, there's see it, there's, you know, some kind of call out that says see attachment, whatever, and, and that attachment doesn't exist any longer. So as far as what Fort Congaree looked like, um, we have a couple of these that uh, were provided to the uh, people that were in charge of actually erecting for it, uh, and that's it. So we have this, and then we have um, uh, one more uh, that comes towards the end of the period. Now, the fort um, was occupied by uh, the South Carolina officials between 1718 and 1722. Uh, when it was operating, it was uh, also a trading factory, which meant that uh, Native Americans would come to the fort to exchange deer skins for trade goods. Uh, after 1722, the fort um, <laughs> falls into, um, uh, well, it's, it's the, the fort is no longer needed. So the command from the commissioners is that they actually destroy the fort uh, and abandon it. And whether or not that actually happened, uh, we don't have any documentary evidence. So, um, after 1722, the region is still part of the, um, uh, you know, uh, the, at the periphery of the settlement, but, um, you know, they're starting to see more settlers come in and start to take up some uh, uh, residences on the um, banks of the Congaree River. Uh, after... Uh, 1735, uh, the settlement of Sax Gotha gets going, and our Fort Congaree story kind of disappears. Um, but the significance of the fort, uh, you know, is always kind of known that it was in the Congarees, and um, in the 1970s, the uh, construction of I-77 uh, kind of lit a fire under uh, archaeologists to try and locate this uh, fort for it was potentially destroyed by road construction. Um, so in the 1970s, the Archaeological Society went out and attempted to locate the fort by using a motor grader. And this is a LIDAR image of old Fort Congaree. And these, uh, uh, hope these stripes here are actually the remnants of the motor grader cuts as they were shown in about 2012. They did not locate uh, definitive evidence of the fort in these motor grader cuts. In 1989, James Mickey went to the location that they had motor graded and he actually managed to identify some uh, defensive enclosures that were located in this area. And if you notice, they're just outside of where the 1970s motor grader stopped excavating. Um, and what he did was he took a backhoe and he looked for the ditch enclosure that he uh, hypothesized was surrounding the fort. And this is what he found over here. So this um, profile here, this is a, a vertical cross section of one of his excavation units uh, shows the moat as he described it and it's got layers of uh, fill and uh, flood deposits on top of it and this is a plan view of the same excavation unit. so you can see that it's this linear trench that's uh, approximately four feet across all right so 
uh, in 20, uh, 2010, 2011, and 2012, we went out uh, through USC. We conducted a field school there. And what we really tried to do was tie in uh, the information that James Mickey collected uh, with uh, some more modern excavation techniques to see if we could um, confirm the location as Fort Congaree and also uh, uh, see if we can locate uh, any evidence of Native American activity at the site. So what this map shows in blue are 2011 through 2012 excavation units and uh, outlines are uh, James Mickey's um, excavation units as they were shown on the previous slide. And then in green, uh, we recorded some, uh, some anomalous uh, trenches that we weren't really sure what they, whether they were part of earlier archeological efforts or, or what exactly they were. Um, so the dots that you see on the uh, image are also uh, the shovel tests that we excavated there. And the shovel tests, um, the shovel tests that we have in the um, uh, excavations and the excavations that we look at um, are used to kind of create a, a, a sample of the site. And we use that to kind of create some, some patterns that. Um, uh, we can use to interpretate the actual, uh, interpret the actual site. Um, um, yep. You are. Yep. Okay. And um, well, I figured tomorrow is just Wednesday, so it. Yeah. I Maybe mean, Jeanette, would you mind uh, muting yeah. your mic, please? Um. I mean, I. So anyway, what we what we do after we excavate these Sunday. is we take some. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. We take uh, some notes off of uh, well, uh, uh, the contents that we're excavating Friday, there, and but um, I'll I'll figure out some. Yeah. Yeah. And that that to uh, establish the. So treat it as flex. Huh? Is use it going to be step. flex, Mark? Is it going to be what? Flex, huh? I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're talking Flex time? Since it's... Yeah, you would get a whole... It's not, flat, it's not so much flex time. You get a whole hot day off because it's a holiday. Okay. So, yeah, so you just take a day off. All right. Okay. And we have to uh, open yes, sir, we're doing you know, everything you're saying. You can use flex you time. Need your bike. Bike. It's a holiday for a holiday. Right. Uh, so, you, can, you you got to work tomorrow. You can take off any other day you want. Okay. Thanks. Friday, Thanks, Alan. Uh, South Carolina competitor Relicron, how may I help you? Who's um? Hello. Hello. Who you think? Hillary, okay. mute your mic. Hillary, mute your mic. Mute your mic. Hillary. Hillary, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, she's all right. So where were we? Sorry. Um, 